Okay. Um, shall I start, Greg? Um, hi, Sam. Hey, how are you doing? All right. Why don't I, why don't I get us, you, Greg? Yeah. Why don't I get us started here tonight? Sure, sounds good. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. We have a very exciting announcement and dem demo to make um, in this episode of In Dallas Live. Um, with me is Sam, our Chairman and Chief Investment Officer. I'm Greg, a founding partner of Endowus. We're really, you know, we're really happy to be introducing FundSmart today. Uh, the ability to customize your portfolio with fantastic fund access. I think, you know, we're, we're really, we really feel as though we're breaking barriers in the financial services industry by building products like this. Um, lowering cost and ensuring that the portfolios you construct are suitable for your goals. So um, next slide, please, Sam. <clears throat> um, as usual, you know, we encourage everyone to, well, quick disclaimers. Um, next slide, Sam. As usual, you know, we encourage everyone to please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps us in search engine optimization. It helps, it helps this content reach more people. Really exciting. Uh, next week, we have a session with Lou, between Lou and Sam. Uh, I think many of you viewers are very familiar with Lou and he will be discussing how to be a CPF millionaire, a multimillionaire. Maybe Sam, do you wanna, do you wanna touch on the topic for next week really quickly? Yeah, I mean, um, Lou's a wonderful friend and um, has been a big supporter. Uh, not that we have any association, but purely because he really believes in what Endowers is doing um, for the individual investor, especially um, for in the space of CPF and preparing uh, Singaporeans and all Singapore-based Singapore investors to prepare better for retirement. And uh, Lou will share his personal story about how um, he became a CPF millionaire um, and um, how you can even not just reach maybe 1 million, which is the initial target. And, um, you know, the name of the movement was 1M65, but eventually he figured out that actually if you use a platform like Endowas or other methods, then you can maybe with your wife get to 4 million or 5 million even. So that's the genesis of the title, 1M65, 4M65 or 5M65. And we're really, really excited to have Lou join us again next week with a new set of slides and new commentary and some new experiences that he'll share with us. Great, thanks Sam. Excited for next week's session. Um, next slide, please. So quick recap, you know, and, and whenever we develop product, we need to understand why we're developing it and who we're developing for and to what end. And Endowis is really founded on a very clean mission. We're not trying to be a trading platform we're not trying to help you speculate in markets. We're not trying to give you, you know, the best charting tools to make, you know, very quick momentum trades and things like that. That's not at all what we're about. Um, for those of you who are already clients, you know that we are a wealth platform. So very simply put, you know, we help people invest better. And we believe that if we can play that role in someone's life, they can live easier today and live better tomorrow, be better prepared for their retirement. Next slide, please, Sam. Um, you know, for those of you joining us for the first time, you know, this mission or this company was really born out of a personal struggle of trying to manage our own wealth for our own families. You know, high cost, poor misaligned advice, and generally a lack of access to products. The entire experience of investing your CPF was very broken, going through multiple institutions, not knowing what to buy, what is appropriate based on your goals and your personal circumstances. So in Dallas, as the first and only digital advisor for CPF, SRS and cash, um, you know, we really, we really tried to elevate every investor with better access to products at a lower cost and with aligned and suitable advice. 
Um, next slide, please, Sam. So as a result of what we do, you know, Endowus is an independently owned and operated fee only digital wealth advisory platform. We don't want people to be confused about what we are. We're not trying to be a fund supermarket of any sort. For many of our clients, um, individuals, family offices, charities, uh, churches, institutions, we provide bespoke wealth advisory services. We help them manage their investment portfolios. And in which case you can have many investment portfolios towards your goals. And what's very important is that endow us is only paid by its clients. And this is something we're very missional about. It's something we, we really want to change in the industry so that there are no more misaligned incentives. There are no more conflicts of interest. Uh, next slide, please, Sam. As a result of our efforts, um, and for those of you who are already clients, you know that we are the first and only digital advisor for CPF, SRS, and cash, where you can now invest your CPF at a low cost, SRS and cash at a low cost, seamlessly online. If you create an account, it takes about five to 10 minutes, depending on using my info or doing so manually. Um, next slide, please, Sam. And, you know, we know the, that the world runs on money. And in the end of the day, it's all about incentives. And if we can systematically align incentives from the foundation of this company, then the rest will fall in place. And by doing so, I'm talking about not being paid on transactions, not being paid sales fees, and very importantly, not being paid by product providers, which would incentivize us to push products that would pay us more. So that's where Endowas comes up with our 100% trailer fee rebates, which you guys are familiar with. And we'll be talking a lot about fees today and sort of where Endowas you know, excels um, and the reason why we structured the fees the way we structured them. Um, Greg, do you want to touch on that slide now or should we do it later? I think we can, I think we can okay. do it later. Yeah, okay, thanks. sounds good. Cool. So, you know, in your world of Endowas, your goals are precisely defined. You have a process for achieving those goals. You know, we have experts on standby, many MAS licensed financial advisor reps, which you can schedule a call with to speak to about your particular circumstance. And we want everyone to have access to the experts, the strategies, the products, which are run by the biggest, um, you know, fund managers with very long-term track records and structure that in portfolios to help you achieve your goals. And FundSmart is really about understanding that everyone has different needs, circumstances, and risk appetites. And as a, you know, as a platform, as a wealth platform, it's our mission to build tools that help clients meet their various goals. So we really built, we really built FundSmart to allow for that flexibility and allow for every client to meet their goals on the Endowas platform with fair, low fees, great access to products and the right advice. Next slide, please, Sam. Yeah, so we're super excited uh, to be launching Endowas Fund Smart. Um, it's been a long time coming. Our team has been working really hard uh, to launch this new solution and service for our customers. Um, as Greg highlighted, many uh, clients have asked for uh, the need and uh, for, sorry, asked for and, um, you know, told us the need to have some level of customization or personalization. And so this is our first step. Uh, bear with us because I don't, I know, we know that it's not a perfect product at the get-go, uh, but we want, we were excited to get it out to the clients who, who need it most. And so we wanted to explain to you exactly what this, you know, what's smart about FunSmart. Um, so we're leveraging the Endowa Smarts in curating and pre-selecting choices uh, that you can build uh, your future of wealth on. And really it boils down to um, a selection process uh, in the fund managers who are the guys who build these products and funds. And it doesn't matter whether it's a mutual fund or a unit trust as they're called uh, or an ETF, they're all funds and funds are managed by fund managers. 
and uh, there's only a um, certain number of them. Well, there's actually quite a lot, 400 uh, or more, but um, there's only a handful that really are worth their money. And so we select them and then they create funds that we, uh, what we consider best in class. And so we curate and select the best in class funds. Um, most of them are some of the best performing as well uh, from the largest global and local fund managers. And then we work with them to bring products that are not necessarily always available. Um, so we give access to institutional share class. Um, sometimes we bring in passive index funds into CPF that wasn't previously available. Uh, but we always work to provide products that are best in class, uh, are the lowest cost in terms of accessibility. So we give access to institutional share class that's not available. We give access to dimensional funds that are not available other than through financial advisors. Or we create funds with large rebates, which we then pass all of uh, all of it onto you so that you can achieve a much lower net uh, cost. And the hard work of maintaining, well, initially screening and then maintaining that list of the best in class funds and then taking, kicking any out that are, you know, have fallen behind and bringing new ones in. The hard work of doing all of that is the work of Endowers Investment Office and the team here, of which Greg and I are both part of. And, um, you know, we, you know, I think somebody asked us, what is best in class? What does that actually even mean? So what it means to us is the highest integrity funds for each asset class or subcategory. We would like to take the hard work of choosing from the thousands of funds out there so that you don't have to waste your time. Um, and we also don't want you to, you know, make the wrong decisions and select funds that are pushed by distributors or fund platforms or banks. Uh, we also don't want you to you know, invest in things that are not appropriate for you and not appropriate for your risk level. So the best in class funds for every category, whether it's equities or fixed income or for our cash smart products, it's a cash management account solutions, uh, which are cash funds and money market funds and short duration fixed income funds. Uh, we apply the same methodology of you know, really delving into how these funds work and who are the fund managers that are managing these funds. Um, so you have to have consistency in their investment philosophy, the strategy, in the implementation, execution. Many people say that they will do something, but do something else. So we need to know that what they say is what they're actually doing. And that's why uh, we need to really delve into these fund managers and do, and do the due diligence that is necessary. Returns are important, but it's not the only thing. So yes, you know, some banks will push you the fund that has outperformed the most in the past one month or three months or this year. Uh, I don't think that is the right definition of good performance. We try to look at funds that have consistently delivered performance over long cycles, if it's possible, and uh, are implementing it in the right way. Uh, we look at benchmarks because it's relevant. It's not the only thing we look at, uh, but if it's a passive investment, obviously it should be at low cost and close to the benchmark index. If it's an active fund, uh, then it should at least be near or above the benchmark so that it's not, uh, you're not paying more for what is effectively a passive or benchmark hugging strategy. Um, and in, while in the process of doing that, we really look for good managers of risk. So there's so much risk in investing, whether it's market risk, volatility, liquidity risk, uh, you know, so many different risks and fixed income, this duration default, many other things. And we look at guys who will be able to manage that risk really well uh, and secure and stable um, you know, outfits that have a process in the way they do things. Uh, investment team and portfolio managers that are stable. They're not gonna be moving around. They're not gonna whipsaw or change strategies just because, just because we have a, a patch of poor performance um, and they will execute at a very high level. And the final thing is always cost, cost, cost. We always say that cost and returns are two sides of the same coin. And if we can reduce costs, that will boost returns immediately. So for passive, passive plus is systematic strategies. It's, you know, it's the most important thing is cost because index minus cost is your return. So if you can reduce costs, then you get close to purely passive index returns. If you're a larger, like active kind of manager, then cost is even more important because you need to be able to generate returns above benchmark uh, after cost. So these are all things that we're looking at. And when we do that, we don't need 400 fund managers. 
Effectively, we are executing Fund Smart with 15 fund managers who are registered retail fund managers here in Singapore, licensed by the MAS. Wonderful names uh, who have hundreds of billions in trillions, if you combine all of them in assets, have a long track record, um, you know, systems and due diligence and uh, processes in place, executing at the very highest level with full and high integrity. And eventually we may get to increase that number again to about 30 because we're looking at new opportunities in areas like ESG or thematic funds or you know funds uh, that um, are maybe not available here in Singapore. We'd like to bring them in. So we will increase the number for fund managers. And the other uh, segment I think is accredited investors and professional investors may require a different set of funds. And there's different fund managers who are AI only fund managers and, and we're working to bring them onto the FundSmart uh, platform as well. And the curated list of funds has come down. If you go to a typical fund supermarket or you know, you look at the thousands of ETFs out there, there's many, many out there. Um, we've brought them down from thousands to just 55 in our initial launch. So you will notice that we will have the best, you know, the Euro US equity fund or the best Asian high yield bond fund or, or the best emerging market fund. And we will not give you too much choice. Uh, because we think that too much choice is a difficult thing uh, to process for many people. Um, we've already done the hard work of screening the best funds in there. And this initial list will focus on uh, firstly CPF included funds as we are the first and only digital advisor for CPF. Uh, we have some exclusive funds in CPF that we'll showcase later on, um, passive investments in CPF. And now we want to have a broader suite of, of best in class funds that we will make available. Um, and the real, you know, um, I think real key to what Fund uh, Smart adds value is really um, in screening it all down to the, 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 you know, 55 funds and eventually maybe we'll get to a hundred, but no more than that. But the most important thing is that the cost uh, of accessing these funds will also be uh, much lower at the fund level. Um, then uh, if you access it directly um, yourself through a DIY fund platform or through obviously banks and others, and we'll go into that detail in later. We're adding some advisory tools to help you build a portfolio. Uh, we'll do a demo later so that you can see more details, but it's a lot of information. Once you build a portfolio and it could be up to eight funds, uh, it could be two funds, it could be a single you know, fund portfolio, but uh, we'll give you a lot of information about historical past performance and fully transparent details to help you make informed decisions. Um, and as a result, what we will uh, provide for you in terms of advice is, you know, providing obviously the endowed advice portfolios. So this is the, still the core of our advised um, portfolios, globally diversified, low cost, and um, you can tweak the risk weightings now more effectively. So before we only allowed six uh, risk weightings from 100% equity to 100% bonds, uh, but you can tweak that. Uh, we'll have model portfolios. So we're launching an ultra defensive portfolio today uh, with you, um, but also we'll have personalized portfolios that you can customize and curate yourself. And this concept of a core plus strategy where Indawas gives you the, this beta exposure to broad markets, which is the advice portfolios here on the left, is the ready-made portfolios uh, made uh, up by, you know, in cash and SRS with dimensional PIMCO and Vanguard funds. And for CPF, we have Vanguard indexed uh, line global passive funds and uh, a series of uh, best-in-class funds that we build uh, an advice portfolio off of. This core strategy should always be where you start from. So I think for 90 to 95% of investors, this is where you start. You build a core allocation to equities and fixed income. And you can do that with our Endowers advised globally diversified low cost portfolios at the right risk level for you. And then on top of that, you can do a core plus satellite strategy of ultra defensive, some cash if you want, and other strategies like ESG if you want to reflect your values. And we will come up with more portfolios and model portfolios, but these are some examples of the kind of things you can create now flexibly on FundSmart. Um, so much faster time to market for us to release model portfolios to you so that you can copy and paste 
into FontSmart and get going. Um, so the first example of a personalization is the risk portfolios. So previously, we only had these six funds, 100% equity, 80-20, 60-40. Why only even numbers? Uh, now we can go with the odd numbers. So you can do 70-30, 50-50 if you want. Uh, you can do 55-45 if you want. And the numbers are here, and it's on our Insights article. So we have two Insights articles that we have released. Uh, with a lot more detail and some suggestions of portfolios that we can utilize. And those will be um, you know, available to everybody. Um, and you can use that to tweak the risk rating. And maybe if you don't like a certain fund or you already have an exposure elsewhere and you want to rebalance it in a way that is appropriate for you and your needs, uh, then you can do that on FundSmart. This is an interesting chart that may be a little bit controversial, but um, this is our cash management, cash smart, uh, solution. So the far left one is the cash smart core, um, which has a gross yield of about 1.29%. And the, the second from right is the cash smart enhanced, which is, uh, so these core and enhanced cash smart portfolios are our off the rack advice portfolios for managing your short term liquidity and your cash. Now there's a lot plethora of you know, other cash uh, solutions out there by a lot of these digital platforms and robos like Manial, iFast, Stashway and Grab has recently released theirs as well. Uh, but all the underlying funds you would notice are very, very similar. And we have all of those funds available to us either at an institutional share class or um, a retail share class with a huge rebate or uh, we actually have some institutional share classes where we've been able to negotiate a further rebate. Um, so we will give all of that back to you to get to a fund level fee that we can guarantee is the lowest in the market. Um, and you can really manage everything you want on FundSmart uh, in terms of your cash. So you don't have to go anywhere else. You can tweak this to target a 1.5% yield, 2% yield, 1% yield if you want to be safer. Always remembering that you know um, risk and returns always go together. It's highly correlated. So if you want higher yield, then you're going to have to take higher risk. Um, and if you're going to like, if you want lower risk, then you're going to have to settle with lower yield. Um, I've played around uh, on FundSmart with this far right strategy. So I developed something called a FundSmart Ultra, and I've taken two of the highest yielding short duration fixed income product, which is the Fullerton Short Term Interest and United SGD. And I've paired that up with what is, I feel the most effective like money market type uh, enhanced liquidity fund from Line Bohubal at 20%, which stabilizes the volatility returns. And I'm able to achieve a, even a higher yield than the cash market enhanced with 2.3%. Um, obviously two out of the three components are similar. So you're not gonna get away uh, too far and you notice that two of the funds are similar to grab auto invest and you know it overlaps elsewhere uh, but this is the beauty of fund smart that you can build anything you want on the platform uh, with the underlying access that we provide at the lowest cost in the industry um, this is a new product that we're launching uh, we've worked closely with fund managers and uh, brought in products that were previously not available um, PIMCO Low Duration Income Fund is the latest uh, in that suite of products. Um, institutional Sing Dollar Hash uh, was just launched literally days before the launch of FundSmart. Um, and we also work very closely with, with Dimensional Fund Advisors to bring in the Global Core Fixed Income Fund. We are the first digital platform and one of the first advisors to access that product. Um, and it's, these are wonderful products to build a portfolio upon. Now, um, our 100% fixed income portfolio has a risk weighting of about 12%. So that is the 12 month rolling worst case outcome um, that can be achieved with the 100% fixed income. Now, uh, the safer version of that is the Endowers Cash Smart, which has a you know, 2%, 3% kind of risk rating. Um, so there's a big gap between those two. And we said, why don't we create a portfolio because our clients want a portfolio that maybe is slightly better yielding and higher return than cash, um, but uh, is more defensive than the 100% fixed income portfolio. Because I think some clients were uh, surprised at the volatility of fixed income returns during the March COVID crisis, where we had major dislocations in global fixed income markets. 
Luckily, the Fed came in, uh, quantitative easing saved the day again, and fixed income returned uh, very sharply and have generated really good returns since then. Um, and I think that you know some clients want something in between the 100% fixed income and the cash management. So this is what we have termed the ultra defensive portfolio. Um, it's a tongue in cheek title, uh, but I think it's super uh, appropriate for what it is supposed to do. So if you're scared about the volatility in the market, you want to park some money, or you want to have a very defensive allocation which stabilizes the volatility returns, and it's 100% fixed income, and yet able to generate about 3% plus yield or returns, this is the portfolio for you. If you want, if you have cash smart, you're not happy with the 2% even, uh, which is amazing in this day of low interest rates, but you want a bit of an oomph, but don't want to take too much risk, then you can move to the ultra defensive portfolio because it's in between those two. And this is going to be published as a separate insights article. It's in the fund smart article. So you can replicate the portfolio with these weightings. Um, and you can notice that the fund level fees are ridiculously low because we access the PIMCO institutional funds. Um, if you go to a DBS retail bank, even if you go to a fund supermarket, or if you go to a UBS or any private bank with $10 million, you would probably not be able to achieve these levels of fund level fees. Dimension obviously is accessible uh, by very few advisors uh, such as us. And so if you build this portfolio, you're building it uh, at an institutional quality level with institutional fees that are super low. So below 50 basis points, uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, some other use cases that I will uh, highlight is like, if you want to build a dimension only portfolio, and we used to have this in our portfolio, the World Equity Fund. It's the single most diversified fund in the whole world with, um, I think, how many stocks is it? 20,000, 12,000, something ridiculous. Um, and, you know, the global core fixed income. So simple two fund strategy, dimensional 100%. You can build a more sophisticated dimensional portfolio as well, uh, but you can build that. Uh, you can build a 100% PIMCO portfolio if you don't like dimensional or something else. Um, with some of the best performing PIMCO fixed income products, uh, the global bond, total return and diversified income, which gives you exposure to EM and high yield as well. Um, and you can generate returns which are uh, phenomenal in the fixed income space. So those are some use cases that we have. Um, I'm going to hand over to Greg to discuss uh, fees. And these are some of the slides that we have. Um, Greg, where do you want to start on this one? You're on mute. Yeah. Hey, hey, Sam. Thanks for all that. Um, you know, I think going back a few slides, I think in, 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 in building portfolios, I just, want to, I just want to make one more point. I didn't want to interrupt you earlier. In yeah. building Which slide? It's extreme. It's okay. We can stay here. It's extremely, oh, sure. it's extremely important that fund managers do what they say. Right. So for example, if Dimensional says that they will take advantage of the small cap and value what you call risk premium, then if small cap and value underperform, you should expect that fund to underperform the market. But what you wanna make sure is that when small cap and value do outperform, if and when they do, that you are allocated based on your intention. So when picking fund managers, I think it's really important that they don't have the style drift, which makes them very unreliable when it comes to actually trying to plan your wealth around what products, um, you know, what to actually, like what to actually allocate for, what to actually allocate to and for what. I mean, we can show you, we can show you 50 funds that have been, up, you know, 20, 30, 40% in the last six months. Like that's not difficult at all. And what really annoys me, and I'm, I'm getting to this slide here, what really annoys me is that when I look at fund platforms, when I look at brokerage platforms, I'm constantly being shown the top 10 funds of the month or some variation of that, right? Top 10 funds of the month, top 10 stocks of the day, so on and so forth. Things that make me wanna chase my own tail, things that make me feel like I'm missing out. And 
a kind of that kind of strategy where you chase your own tail is just not sustainable in the long run. And the average investor over a long period of time, as a result, does around inflation, you know, around 2% in annualized return over a 20 year period. And the reason for that is because of all of these influences constantly trying to make us chase our own tail being like, why was I not in that fund that went up 30% last month? So on and so forth. Now we see a massive problem in the way, um, we see a massive problem in the way a lot of platforms or distributors from local banks, private banks, financial advisors, brokers, low cost fund platforms, so on and so forth, are incentivized in that you are paying them, but actually where they make most of their money is from the fund management companies in the trailer fee or the hidden kickback. And in some cases that can be 50, 60, and we've heard even 70% of the expense ratio of a fund. Now, you know, the fund charges a total expense ratio uh, in Singapore, that the average is around 1.5%. That is taken straight out of the value of the fund every day. So every day, uh, if it's 1.5%, it's 1.5% divided by uh, 250 trading days in the entire year. And they just clip that small amount out of the asset value of the fund and pocket that as the fee. But what you don't realize is a huge chunk of the fee that the fund manager takes actually just gets passed back to the guy who sold you the fund. And that leads to all sorts of misaligned incentives, right? Now me as a platform or me as an advisor or me as a private banker, I'm incentivized to push you funds that pay me the highest margin. And I can go to the fund managers and say, if you don't pay me more margin, I'm not gonna sell your fund. I'm gonna sell fund manager B's fund because they're paying me more than you're paying me. And it's very simple, right? I just put it higher in the list. Or if I walk into a bank branch, I tell everyone at the branch that this week we're selling this fund. And if you sell this fund, you all get a bonus, so on and so forth. So this has been, this is the norm 99% of the way funds are sold right now in Singapore and in most of Asia, actually in most of the world, it is done this way. Um, next slide, please, Sam. We really wanna clean this up. You know, you pay in Dallas, you know exactly how much you're paying in Dallas. It's digital, it's value added advice, it's access to the institutional clean share class of the fund it's 100% trailer fee rebates. You know exactly how much we're making from you. And we only make money based on the assets you have with us. You pay the fund management companies directly. If there's a rebate that's paid to us for selling you the fund, we pass it all back to you. And that's it. Um, next slide, please, Sam. Um, I think you skipped one. Yeah. So, I mean, something that's very popular in Singapore is the PIMCO suite of funds. I mean, we're using PIMCO as an example because they're a fantastic fund manager, especially in the fixed income space. Um, you know, they manage almost $2 trillion. They're the biggest fixed income manager in the world. And they're widely sold in Singapore across all channels from private banks, Swiss private banks, local private banks, DIY platforms, retail banks, so on and so forth. The institutional share class is 0.49% of the PIMCO Global Bond Fund. The retail share class is 0.9% more than that, 1.39%. In Dallas, accesses the institutional share class directly. We put this in a managed portfolio where we're constantly watching your portfolio, rebalancing it to its target weights as a whole portfolio for you. I mean, lower cost immediately means higher returns. That's very obvious. Lower cost, better access. So access to that institutional share class directly means higher returns for you, much more fuss-free, 
And now with FundSmart, the, the ability to personalize that portfolio even more for your needs. Um, next slide, please, Sam. Similar situation for CPF. Uh, you know, Endow is was, was well ahead of the fee cuts that came up. I don't know if you guys saw, we wrote an article in the Business Times in our new column called The Science of Wealth about the fee cuts. And, um, you know, bringing sales fees to zero, Endow has exclusive access to certain products in CPF. And we'll go through that uh, more in the demo. We rebate 100% of trailer fees and you guys all know that the endowist fee is 0.4% for CPF and SRS. You can, first of all, you cannot access some of the products on the other platforms, such as the Infinity Vanguard managed S&P 500 or Global Stock Index Fund, which we worked closely with OCBC Line Global and Vanguard to make available to CPF money. And I think that's like something that you have to appreciate with, within our mission is that you know, just like bringing in the low duration income fund, just like bringing in the um, Infinity series to, uh, to CPF, just like bringing in and working with fund managers like Dimensional to make more of their funds retail accessible in Singapore dollars, that is the value of what Endowist does for the industry and for our customers. Next slide, please, Sam. And uh, you guys all know about our cash management solution, Cash Smart. Um, you know, significantly lower cost to run your cash management solutions, whether it's targeting a 1% yield, 2% yield, or maybe 2% plus yield on the Endowist platform um, versus others. Next slide, please, Sam. So, in a nutshell, you know, think about Endowist in terms of enabling access to the best fund managers in the world, uh, equipping you with the advice and the expected returns of the asset classes of the funds you're buying, okay? Um, constantly, us constantly monitoring the portfolio, making sure it's in line with what you set. We will rebalance it back to what you what you uh, initially set as your target asset allocation for you at no additional cost. And the reason for this is because we really want you to create portfolios for, for specific goals in your real world, in your real life. And that's really the way FundSmart, it's really the way the Endowist platform is built as a wealth platform, not a trading platform. So we wanna make that distinction very, very clear. It's about being low cost and being very transparent about cost. Of course, safety and security, you know, um, we have our double ledger system with UOB KHAN, where when you create an account, you get a UOB KHAN account in your own name. When you send us money, you send it directly to a UOB KHAN trust account, so on and so forth. And of course, convenience, you know, making this available 100% digitally and investable with all your sources of money, cash, CPF, and SRS. Sam, next slide. Yeah, that's it. We're gonna move on to the demo um, now, but before we do, I just wanted to answer a couple of questions. So there were some questions related to, um, you know, underlying uh, model portfolios like UDP and everything else that we will create in the future. And um, I just wanna highlight a few things. One is that you know, we will have uh, a functionality to drop down menu and select certain model portfolios like UDP. We may introduce other solutions that you can choose a whole portfolio instead of choosing individual funds. Uh, that function is not yet available, uh, but it will become available to you. So please bear with us on that. Um, and there's a few questions about certain funds, um, PIMCO Global Bond versus Dimensional Global Core. Um, and then there was another question about, you know, world equity versus dimensional global equity. Um, you can look through our fund rationales. We'll have more details on our FAQs. Uh, we will also make available a fund screener. Um, so we'll have some basic information about the individual funds uh, on our landing page for FundSmart. Uh, we will also, uh, you'll be able to screen uh, for certain categories and, um, you know, source of funds, et cetera, that will be made available very shortly. 
I think Greg was working on that today. So um, we're almost there. Uh, so we, we are uh, going to have more resources and more tools to um, work with you to help you make you better informed so that you can make appropriate decisions and choices. Now, I do want to emphasize, however, so for example, the PIMCO Global Bond Fund is a much more government focused, uh, safe and more stable, lower volatility fund and very US centric versus a dimensional global core, but um, which has a global name in it and it's globally diversified, but much more heavy in investment grade. Also the strategies are very different in the sense that dimensional uses systematic quantitative ways of investing, focus on the factors versus a PIMCO, which takes you know, some of these factors into play, but also really want to drive total returns. So it really is about understanding the different um, intricate details of the funds. And for many people, this is way over their head. And that is why we began the business with our core advice portfolios. For the bulk of the investors, we once again would like to emphasize that you need to start here. You need to start with this off the rack global core product um, um, and if you want a fixed income product that gives you broad global exposure, then these are the products, the global bond, emerging market bond, income and global core will build you a portfolio that is truly diversified, uh, not only in terms of geography, uh, but also across the credit spectrum. You'll have some government, you'll have investment grade, you'll have emerging markets and high yield exposure um, and municipal bonds and, um, you know, um, other types of bonds. So you'll have risk spread out across geography, across credit, across duration. And we've optimized this portfolio for you so that you don't have to do the hard work of going into FundSmart and figuring out which funds are the best. So I do like, I would like to say that the bulk of investors uh, trust us. This is the product that is the best for you. Take it off the rack. You can adjust the risk level, the equity and bond fixed uh, ratio. Um, and we'll play, you can play around with it. As I said, the global, this is the core product. And then you can have a satellite product, which, you know, adds certain things to the core product that it doesn't have uh, certain geographic biases, or you can reflect your values like ESG and you can manage your cash and ultra defensive, et cetera. But, you know, really we need to start with this core advice portfolio, especially if you find it uh, difficult uh, to select which funds are the best. Uh, play around with the platform, fun smart, uh, but, you know, really, uh, try to make the, the decisions that is most appropriate for you. Um, just because we released FundSmart, it doesn't mean you actually have to use it. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing because Greg needs to share his screen to show the demo. Um, and in the meantime, I'll look at the questions. Um, Thanks, any update on dimensional? Um, okay, I will let you share. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Any update on Dimensional will be when it will be made available to CPF funds. Our friends at Dimensional are working very hard uh, to bring it into CPF. They are approved as a, or included as a fund manager. Now they have to work on uh, onboarding the individual funds and we hope that that will be coming very soon. Um, so I know it's been a long time coming. We've been waiting too. Uh, so hopefully before the year end or at the beginning of the year next year, we will have Dimensional funds available, but we'll keep you updated because these things are not set in stone. Great. Uh, thanks, Sam. Um, can everyone see my demo screen? Yeah, looks good. Okay, great. Um, so this is our FundSmart landing page, which you can find, of course, in the menu here um, when you visit in Dallas. As you guys know, you know, it's about customizing, being able to execute, monitor, and grow your wealth. Um, these are the fund managers that are currently available in FundSmart. And we'll show you these real-time tools that help you understand your needs and goals and whether or not the portfolio you've constructed is appropriate for you. You know, um, of course, we have a deep partnership with UOBK Hien, and you can do everything on the Dallas platform. For those of you, uh, this is a picture of our, our, our native app. As you guys know, you know, we've, we've always been web and completely mobile responsive. Uh, you can actually now find us on the App Store. We will make a bigger announcement about this soon. But as listeners tonight, you get a sneak peek. And guys, I think very important, you know, <laughs> investing is about being able to live better. So 
building these tools is not like go and change your portfolio allocations all the time based on what is doing well or what is doing poorly in that moment in time. We want Endow Us to save you money and time and grow your wealth better so that you can live better. So please keep that you know, very, very clear in your minds. Um, again, you know, we've screened funds, made sure that they are tax efficient. Many of them are USITs structured. So you're not paying unnecessary dividend withholding tax. You're not at risk of US estate tax. Um, as many people are who invest in US listed ETFs. Um, you know, our fixed income solutions, many of them are Singapore dollar hedged. All of the funds in FundSmart currently are Singapore dollar denominated. And of course, you know, you can sign up very easily. I know that many of you are existing clients. I'm going to use our colleague Sin Ting's account as an example. So Sin Ting's our chief client officer. I'm sure many of you guys have actually interacted with Sin Ting before. This is her account. And we'll go through the making of a few fund smart portfolios to see how um, this process works. So what you need to do, um, this is her dashboard. These are her goals. What you need to do to get started is add a goal, which can be done here or here. And you will see a new option. Um, you guys are very familiar with cash smart and general wealth accumulation. Uh, you'll see a new option fund smart. Click here. And for this fund smart goal, I'm, I'm going to do a few. So I'll just call this the demo. Well, let's see. I'll call this the passive CPF stocks long term. Um, when you create your fund smart portfolio, you can select the goal type. So you can select cash management or general wealth accumulation. I can select the funding source. And depending on the funding source, the types of funds available will filter based on what is investable. This is my passive CPF stocks long-term goal. So I'll select CPF. I know this is a stock portfolio, so I'll be like, okay, you know what? I'm comfortable with a high loss tolerance to maximize my returns over the long-term. I will then say, okay, you know, I want to invest in equity funds available in CPF. And these are the equity funds available in CPF. I already know that I want to be in the US S&P 500. And let's see another fund. I want to be in the Infinity Global Stock Index Fund. And I'll weight this 60%, 40%. I want to make an initial investment of $100,000 pulled straight out of my CPF. And immediately this will load. It will tell me the worst and best one-year results. And this includes the global financial crisis, the average annual return in Singapore dollars for this portfolio, and the total fees I will be paying to the fund manager, getting my trailer fee rebates, and the endowas fees for running this portfolio. I'll be able to see a projection, my, the underlying holdings of the fund, blended after we've constructed this portfolio. So you'll see that, you know, you're very heavily um, in a lot of the biggest companies in the world because of in this portfolio. My country allocation, because, you know, maybe I'm like, this is too much US. Uh, this ends up being a completely developed market portfolio. This is different from our core allocations, which has an emerging market fund and an Asia focused fund. The Schroeder's Global Emerging Markets and the uh, first centier, uh, now called first centier, used to be first state dividend advantage fund in our core allocations. So you'll see by constructing this portfolio, which you thought maybe was a good idea, you'll see if this is actually what you want, if this is actually how you want to be allocated to the world. Um, and sector allocations as well. So uh, the underlying fees, of course, you know, we want to be very transparent about how we get paid, you know that this is the only money we make, this 0.4% from Endowas. Both of these funds are exclusive to Endowas currently because we rebate 100% of the trailer fees. So you cannot buy these funds 
on other platforms, um, even other CPF invest investment administrators. Of course, you can see the long-term returns as usual. You can see one month return down 3%, uh, longer term returns, you know, annualized return over the last 10 years, 10.31%. And let's scroll back to 2008, negative 40%. So all of that should be very, very clear. If you're happy with this, all you have to do is confirm by SMS. The goal will be created. We will immediately create the orders. And because you made an initial investment of 100,000, we will prepare that to be sent to CPF to be retrieved and invested uh, with your CPF money. Okay, so. That's an example. So, Sam, can you monitor for questions in case um, we get them? In you know. Yep, I am. Okay, cool. Keep going. Thanks. As I, as I keep on going here, now let's do another goal. You know, maybe I want this to be a super defensive cash. Super defensive cash. So, what would that entail? Um, you know, this is money. For me, this is money that I need in the very, very short term for really unknown circumstances in case the world really blows up, right? I only want to be invested in institutional fixed deposits. So I go Singapore dollars. I say, what loss toler tolerance assessment? What is the worst drawdown percentage I can tolerate for this investment? And I say only up to 1%. And I only want to be in this floating cash fund. Again, this is uh, you know for fifty thousand dollars, and immediately I can see my projected returns after all fees uh, for running this portfolio. The total fees, including um, in Dallas, after the rebate. So it's 0.15 percent by the fund. They rebate 0.05% and Dallas charges 0.05%. So your total cost per year for running this portfolio net net is 0.15%. If you like this, you confirm by SMS and you're off to the races. Um, let's do another example. I'm gonna add a goal again, fund smart portfolio. This time I want a dimensional 50-50, and this is for my, um, let me think, this is for my five years. So let's call it the 2025. I want to invest for general wealth accumulation with my cash. You know, this is my five-year goal. I wanna be kind of conservative. So maybe I'm just gonna say 18%. Uh, so I have a low loss tolerance for this goal. I call it dimensional 50-50, but let's see where we end up with this portfolio. So let's first do the equity portion. And I wanna be in the World Equity Fund, which Sam was talking about earlier, the World Equity Fund, which has over 10,000 securities on 44 markets, overweight the long-term risk premiums of small value and profitability. I then wanna add a fixed income portfolio by dimensional the global core fixed income. And let's see where I end up with 50, 50. Um, you know, this is for a, my car, which I have to buy uh, because my COE is expiring in, in five years time. And I need conservative, I need a hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so let's see where we end up. And it tells us now that this portfolio that I've constructed is too aggressive for my stated risk tolerance and goals. So, you know, I wouldn't have imagined that. I have to now go back and take a look at what to tweak to make this more in line with my objectives. Again, you know, you can immediately see the holdings, uh, so on and so forth. The fees, 0.94% the returns, how did it do in 2008? Negative 21%. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say, well, you know, maybe negative 
is a bit too much for me to handle. So I'm actually gonna lower this now. I'm gonna tweak this to 30, 70. It will immediately recalculate and now I'm in line. So my worst 12 month outcome was 17.45%. My average annual return, 5.41% total fees, so on and so forth. Um, and that's the flexibility of the FundSmart platform. I mean, I think it's, it's um, we want to build tools to help people manage their wealth better, to better understand what to expect. And building FundSmart this way encompasses that in an experience where you can self-direct, you can learn how the different asset classes play against each other and construct a portfolio that is made for your goals. Okay, one more example I wanna show um, is the ultra defensive portfolio that Sam was referring to earlier. Sam, are we monitoring for any questions? I, did, I just don't wanna... Yeah, there are two questions that I want to touch on, but maybe we can do that after this last demo on the UDP. Okay. Or should I do the question first? Why don't you do the question? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type in the UDP funds. But why yeah, don't you... why don't you create that in the background and people can watch while yeah. I answer the questions from Sufyan and also Alwyn. Um, so first of all, Alwyn gave a great question about the benchmarks and whether we can include that into our fund smart and advice portfolios. I think it's a great suggestion. Uh, the difficulty in executing really, Alwyn, is that um, you know benchmarks is actually not something that is set in stone. It's not just fixed. Uh, benchmarks with different funds are wildly different. A China fund benchmark alone can use a CSI benchmark. It could be a Shenzhen or Hong Kong or Greater China, MSCI or a FTSE index. There are very different um, you know, index providers. And so it's wildly different. The fund itself will choose a benchmark uh, that it will target. Some guys do it, you know, play the game and get an easy one and try to beat it. Some people have, you know, really esoteric indexes as a market uh, benchmark, which are not available to people even. Um, so the benchmark thing is, you know, helpful and we do look at it, uh, but it's not the only measure of performance and outperformance. I think what's important is the category that it's in, the asset class equities or fixed income, um, you know, what sub sectors it's in and what exposure of risk is providing you. So we'll look at the benchmarks in an appropriate manner and across uh, sectors geographies to try to find the best, um, you know, appropriate assessment of performance. Uh, but thank you for that suggestion and we'll take that into note. Um, thank you, Alvin. And uh, we'll see if we can, you know, try to figure out tools that will help improve transparency and also help you guide you uh, in selecting the right funds that's appropriate for you. And the other question on Sufyan, are you planning to dish out more markets related advice? Uh, to use as a fund smart. Um, as you know, we're not about, you know, timing markets or trying to forecast the future. Um, you know, we all, you know, have different varying degrees of experience. I do have a lot of experience, but it doesn't mean that I have a higher hit rate in predicting what's going to happen in the future. Um, however, I can make informed decisions. I've done some webinars on, um, you know, the divergence between the economy and markets um, and other things about, you know, you know, about the markets as well, where we do provide commentary um, thoughtful insights and also some, you know, ideas about where the world may be heading in the future. But um, I don't think it really matters for people who will be investing in a core portfolio, uh, largely investing passively uh, in terms of asset allocation, who are trying to save regularly so that they can build wealth for the future. For the bulk of this type of investors who are we are serving, um, I don't think we should be going in and out of funds like Greg suggested. The best performing funds always, you know, are highlighted, are pushed to us um, and we get enamored by it in the short term, but they're not often the best funds and most suitable for us. Uh, so I think it's important for us to do the due diligence. Um, thank you for those questions. Thank you, Sufian. And Greg, why don't you um, show the ultra defensive portfolio? Yeah. So um, here's the ultra defensive portfolio. And guys, I think, you know, when we construct these portfolios, we're not just looking at historical return, right? We're looking at their actual strategies and where we are in terms of the term and credit risk premiums and how much those funds, underlying funds are taking in those term and credit risk premiums and therefore how the portfolio will react in, 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 parts, in times of stress. 
So we talked about how the 100%, um, the 100% fixed income portfolio might, uh, have, you know, in a, in a 12 month rolling period could go down by over 12%. We've constructed the ultra defensive portfolio and you know, me not knowing any better, I said I can only tolerate 4% drawdown. Now the advisor, which is in Dallas as a platform has now said, actually, you know, the ultra defensive portfolio is too aggressive for your stated risk tolerance and goal. So it's now upon me to adjust this to let's say 10% before it will accept the portfolio I've constructed and making sure that aligns to my risk tolerance and goals. I think, you know, we don't do any back, we don't do any back testing that requires us to time the market in such a way um, that would move you from different asset classes at the right time, so on and so forth. We're also not using this concept called VAR, like value at risk, We're we're taking the funds and the best proxies to this, these actual funds and um, running a historical portfolio, uh, historical portfolio performance from 2003 or from as far back as we can until today. And, you know, there's a huge amount of value in doing this. We understand how these different asset classes work together. You know, if one fund is low duration, then we will see how low duration did versus some of these other funds. If they have real track records, we'll see how they did versus some of the other funds. So this is the low duration, uh, ultra defensive, 100% bond portfolio targeting around a, sorry, I'm scrolling around a lot, targeting around a 4.3% average return with the worst to best outcomes, as you can see, with annual outcomes, as you can see. And it's with this information that you can determine as well, you know, what you want to use this portfolio for. You might say, okay, well, this is a bit higher risk than I originally intended. Do I want to change the components? Do I want to change my reason for this investment? And I think, you know, for those of you familiar with Dallas, we're always working on identifying the reason for investment that results in you actually committing to a certain asset allocation, to a certain group of funds. And these tools, this fund smart tool allows you to do that more intelligently than ever. I don't think there's actually any products out there that are similar to what um, fund smart has achieved and, uh, and yeah, we really hope that you guys can use it to your advantage. Sam, anything, anything to yeah. add? Any questions we should be addressing? No, that's great. I think um, we'll have many more use cases. We'll have many more model portfolios. Uh, bear with us. We will improve the functionality. Um, some of you tried already on the mobile app very quickly uh, to add, you know, access Fund Smart. It's not yet available. Um, on the mobile app. Uh, that's why we haven't made a public announcement on the mobile app. We will make it feature parity soon. Our engineers are working really hard to make this um, work, but <clears throat> it, is, it is completely safe. I think TC just asked whether it's safe because it's in beta. Completely safe. We just <clears throat> call it beta because it doesn't have full feature parity and have all the functionality of the web app. And remember that this web app is a fully, you know, um, um, reactive mobile uh, web app so that, you know, on your mobile phone, if you access it through your browser, it's fully functional <clears throat> and easy. But um, in the Indawas mobile app, you can do pretty much everything, invest, redeem, see, you know, balances, everything you, you can do. Um, the two real big things that I think um, are not available yet is FunSmart because we've just launched and we will make that available. Um, the other thing is onboarding if you're a new client. Um, it, but you can actually go in there and do pretty much everything else. And even if you cannot, there's a, a menu that takes you out to the web environment and then brings you back straight afterwards as well. So it's fully functional, it's fully safe. Um, you know, um, it's OTP, you have, you know, messages, your, you know, face ID uh, to make it super safe uh, for usage. 
Um, Julian O asked, how do we change from a 70, 30, five years down the line to a 50, 50 on this fund smart? Um, in five years time, it will be fully functional. You'll be able to do a lot more than what you're able to do right now. Um, and you will have a lot more exciting services. Um, but right now, uh, that goal modification is not, um, you know, uh, possible at the moment. Um, but we hope that you're investing not for the next three, six months, uh, when it will be available, we hope, and uh, you'll be investing for many, many years, and that, you know, you'll have good returns. And uh, we are working on a retirement solution that gives you active asset allocation adjustments through your life. And so you don't have to like time this move from 70, 30 to 50, 50. You can, we can do that, automate that all for you. So there's a lot of things that we're working on that would be super exciting, help you and guide you and advise you along your lifetime investment journey, managing your total wealth, your CPF, SRS, cash um, towards multiple goals in different buckets of the money. Um, it's amazingly seamless and uh, a wonderful customer experience. So we're working towards that final end goal, um, but we have some things that we need to, you know, prioritize and so we will continue to improve it and uh so thank you julian we will make that available function available at the moment you will have to redeem cancel you know redeem everything from that goal and create a new goal at 50 50 and then you can just shift that over um so hopefully it's not that difficult uh but we will make that goal modification easier in the future as well and and i think um you know for those of you who have been clients of endow us for six months or a year, you will know that we're extremely open to feedback. Um, FundSmart was really designed, FundSmart was really designed um, based on a lot of user feedback that we had in interviewing clients, uh, you know, clients requesting for certain features, requesting for certain funds. So we're really open to it. We, we live for our clients. We design our platform so that it best serves our clients. So please just write into us. Um, please, you know, give us feedback. If there are funds that you want to see on the platform, please write in, and we will consider them. Um, yeah, I'd like to point out that below on the uh, YouTube channel there is a link uh, to schedule a call with one of the Endowers MAS licensed reps. Um, also, sign up for our next session um, with Lou uh, on building multi-million, um, you know, assets through your CPF. Uh, but that MAS license representative call option allows you to basically uh, schedule a call with one, one of our license reps. So please uh, feel free to click on that. Um, you know, if you want more uh, help and advice, then um, you can do that too. Um, this question about forced selling and funds ceasing to operate, I think is an interesting one. Alex, thanks for that. Um, it's, it rarely ever happens and funds are, uh, not like uh, companies or, you know, platform businesses that go out of business. Um, the funds dwindle in assets and then it becomes too small to operate. Then what the fund manager would do is reach out to the investors and say, you know, we are thinking about these fund, uh, this fund, to, uh, we were thinking about closing this fund, you know, what are your plans? How should we transfer? So the transfer is very safe and secure. Um, and also it doesn't force sell the portfolio at any given point in time. Uh, we'll be notified well in advance by the fund managers. We'll give you other options. If it's an advised model portfolio, sorry, advised portfolio, uh, then we will replace uh, funds to better funds. Uh, most of our funds are quite sizable um, and our fund managers have brought these funds in for strategic reasons. And uh, we don't foresee any, of, any possibility of a forced selling of the portfolio. Um, and, um, you know, a fund seizing is possible, very uh, uncommon, uh, but we'll have very long advance notice before we, are, uh, we need to do that. And then the final point I would make is that, you know, if it's concerns about the safety of your investment, Endowers is structured in a way that is the most safest way to manage uh, your funds. Unlike other robos or other certain digital platforms, we are um, utilizing a double ledger system, um, working with Yobi Kahan, who is our broker partner and also the largest broker here in domestically in Singapore, uh, and also a CPF uh, included, uh, CPF investment administrator themselves. And so we work very closely with them and you know we are planning to be around for a very long time, but even if we disappear, 
this trust brokerage account that has been created in your own name at UBKN uh, will be accessible. Uh, you'll immediately be able to access your assets. Um, and, it, and we do not touch your money. We do not commingle your assets in any way. So it is the safest way to manage assets here in Singapore. Great. I think that wraps it up. Greg, any last comments or thoughts? Um, not right now. I mean, please check it out, guys. Please give us feedback. We would love to hear from you. If you don't have an Endowist account, it's very easy to create one. And, um, and thank I you, Madeline, for onboarding right now. <laughs> she just said it's a seamless experience. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Madeline. And, um, and uh, yeah, we hope, we hope we can be helpful in your wealth journey. Okay, look forward to seeing you next week with Lou and uh, talking about building wealth in your CPF portfolios. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you, everyone. Good night.